Hello everyone, I'm Andy from uh, Whitelight. We're here to show you our mixed reality tech lab. And here we're in a green screen environment. We've all worked in green screen environments. We understand the challenges of working in green screen. There are some fantastic keyers out there that do a great job, but we have some challenges in these environments. It might be the, the way it lights me, it might be the way I connect with the content. But we're actually here inside an LED video cube We've got some LED video walls here from Rode. They're 2.8 mil pitch LED walls. So I'm actually standing inside a box that I can see. That allows us to do things like this. So here, I'm stood inside a 3D world. This is being generated live in Notch on our media server, on our disguise media server. And this allows me to build a connection with the content. I can actually see this screen. I can interact with these screens. I can be lit naturally by the world that's behind me. I can see everything that's around here and feel like I'm actually immersed in this space. We worked on a project earlier on in the year with Discovery Eurosport. Um, we built the Cube, which won an innovation award on Sunday night. And as you can see in this clip that's running behind me, uh, Amy Fuller, athlete, she just walked into our Cube after being on the slopes. And she was very nervous, never been on broadcast before, completely untrained in a broadcast world. And she was able to interact with that content and immediately, within 30 seconds, feel completely at home inside that studio space. The same sort of technology we used for ITV Sports out in uh, Russia for the World Cup, where we knew we had a very limited view outside of the studio window. And we were able to add an augmented reality dome using Viz over the top of that, which extended that view and allowed us to see the, uh, the spires of St. Basil's, which we wouldn't have otherwise been able to see. And that allows us to mask areas of the studio or extend our studio into a virtual world. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We have a real set extension that you can see outside of this LED video cube. So as the camera pans around, we understand where the pixels are in the LED video wall, and where we don't have pixels in the video wall, we can add them in virtual reality. So as Chris pans around, we have a virtual set extension that continues outside of the LED box. This is a really, really flexible solution. And at the push of a button, we can reskin this model in real time. I can add new textures. I can bring in new objects. I'm now stood here analyzing basketball. Uh, I can see that there's a ball here behind me because it's being re uh, rendered into our back plate. I can actually see it. I can avoid it. There's augmented reality objects that are in the front plate in front of me. The push of a button on my iPhone here I can rebrand this set. So we're now talking about football. I can see that there's a trophy here. I can make sure that I avoid that trophy. I can reference the content that's happening around me. We've changed the color of the LED lines. All of this is happening in real time. Again, push of a button. Let's go and talk about tennis. So I'm now in a tennis studio. We could be analyzing tennis. I've got an augmented reality uh, element that's flown in here. This is being generated in real time. The lighting and reflections that are happening on it are real time. One of my colleagues uses the, uh, the iPad over there to actually change the position of the sun in our virtual world in real time. You'll see that the, the sunlight coming through the windows on the floor is moving and the reflections onto the model are happening in real time. So this might be connected to an external data source or to a lighting console. Uh, just a very quick word about how this actually works. So here we're in a, a different environment and we've got the schematics of how the system works. It all runs through this disguised media server. So we've got a couple, uh, multi cameras, two cameras with Moses Star Tracker going into a disguised media server, which is rendering the content in, what, in notch in real time, going out to the vision mixer. So we have two cameras running into the disguised media servers. That's generating the content to their perspective. It's giving Chris, the jib operator, a real preview of the, what the content's going to be to his perspective, and then rendering that out via the vision mixer to the LED video walls. We're using Notch to generate the content in real time. This is the uh, user interface for Notch. This is a very inclusive workflow that allows you to work in any um, traditional 3D modeling application you might be used to working in, 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, and drag those assets into Notch and then allow that to generate the content in real time, integrate with the lighting console, integrate with external data sources, and generate these worlds in a very simple way. So jumping back into a different environment, I'm now in a boxing ring. This is a good demonstration of how we're taking half of the model and rendering it into the back plate so I can see it and I can understand where things are. And the same model is being rendered into the front plate in front of me so that I can stand inside this boxing ring and we're perfectly aligning the virtual world, the real world, and everything that's happening around me. So we've built a completely mixed reality immersive environment. That's only possible because we uh, have a very, very complex calibration system that's happening very quickly that's allowing us to line up the tracking system of the cameras, the pixels of the LED video wall, 
and our entire workflow. And we do that in a very quick way with a registration system you can see here. We're using a structured light pattern that's appearing on the screens. The camera is tracking that and see, understanding what it can see through its lens. And then that's allowing us to figure out where everything is in 3D space. So within about two minutes, we can completely calibrate the system. And that will give us a perfectly aligned virtual world, real world, and disguised media server platform. Another very important part of this whole workflow is lighting. So if we turn the ambient lights off at this point and we just stood in a dark box, you can see I'm in a dark environment. I'm lit as I would expect to. There's some light on me from the InVision monitor behind me. And if one of my colleagues turns on one of the real studio lights here, we have a source four above me. It's a real light. It's lighting me. The lighting desk is, is actually turning that fixture on. And it's also turning on the same fixture in the virtual world. So it's actually creating a light in the virtual world and blending that sort of barrier between the real and the virtual world. If we turn the other key light on, you'll see that from the other angle. Uh, so we can actually light the real world and light the virtual world. And we're controlling all of this from the lighting desk. The whole workflow you're seeing here is actually uh, done offline as well. So we have a, a visualizer from the media server. That's allowing us to see everything offline. We can do, means we can do production months before a show. We can be looking at the different camera angles. We can be understanding what they're going to see. We can be planning things, building these 3D worlds. Nowhere near the studio. We only need to then go to the studio when we're ready to actually plug it in and go. That means we can save a lot of money in, in workflow, in offline visualization, and come up with bigger, better ideas. So I'm going to leave this now in the tech lab environment and would invite anybody up to come and actually have a go, connect with the content, get immersed in what we're actually doing here and understand how believable and engaging this can really be. Thank you very much.